Today I'm going to look at a Yamaha KX300U cassette deck. This one here was brought in by a buddy of mine and uh, says it um, fast forwards and rewinds and fast forwards. It doesn't play. So we're going to take a look and see if we can figure out what's wrong with this one and, um, and see if we can fix it without putting in any new parts. This one could be a challenge and you guys might actually learn something. Check this one out. Here I have a Yamaha Natural Sound Cassette Deck model KX300U. Put it into play and it goes into fast forward. Observe. Press play. Press rewind. Press fast forward. Let's see what's wrong with this one. First, we'll remove the cassette door so we can observe what happens when I press play. Aha! You see what's happening here? The head is not attempting to lift and if the head doesn't lift, the pinch roller won't lift to engage the capstan and pinch roller and regulate the tape speed. What we're seeing happening here, this is actually just the low torque play take up spool turning, not the high torque for fast forward and rewind. So we have a pinch roller and capstan that is not engaging and the head is not lifting. Let's uh, open it up and find out why. Sometimes it's great to have a good flashlight to see what you're doing, especially in dark crevices like down in here. So I'm using my Through Night TC15 flashlight. Give them a little plug. If we look down here, we'll see that the capstan motor is not rotating. And the capstan motor is going to use a cam on the uh, flywheel to actually raise and lower the head. So why is the motor not rotating? Is it the motor is shot or is it not receiving voltage? So we'll just try spinning the motor and see whether it'll start up. Maybe it's got a dead spot. But in this case, it doesn't appear to even be trying to turn. It's like it's seized up. Is the motor seized? Well, let's check for voltage and see whether, first of all, we've got any voltage getting to the motor and we'll try to determine whether the motor is causing the problem or whether the belt is all bound up and seized. Here's our meter and DC voltage measurement mode and we'll see that, put it in play. Oh, we've got 12 volts and guess what? It just started to move. So what that's telling, and it's going slow, what that's telling me is that this motor here is probably shot or getting on its last legs and just by moving it there must be a dead spot and the motor possibly stopped in that dead spot. Now it's possible that the motor just needs to be lubricated. We'll take it out and, um, and see whether I can just lubricate the motor and get the speed back up or is it something else that's stopping it. It could be, it could be the, the uh, capstan bearing itself as uh, seized up too. That also could do it and it just stopped and just in the place that it stopped it couldn't start up. It looks like there's a fair bit of wear on this pinch roller too but let's pull the mechanism apart and just uh, take a look at this. This belongs to a buddy of mine and he's been archiving a lot of tapes and the, you know the unit hadn't seen service for 20 odd years and now he's putting it through its paces and transferring a bunch of uh, cassette tapes over. And he's given me all those old tapes too that uh, that he's done with and there's some good tapes here so you know most of these tapes have only got a few passes on them. Look at how good that tape looks. So um, if any of you guys need any test tones I've got I've got a bunch of really good tapes now that I can bulk erase and uh, use to record test tones on. Anyway let's um, Let's pull the deck out on this thing, see where the, the fault is, whether it's the motor or whether the, just the mechanism seized up. You know, people like to brag about how great Yamaha stuff was, but uh, looking at the inside of this one, uh, I would say that there's really not a lot to brag about. It's all plastic.
one nice thing is that these decks came out relatively easy. So they were easy to work on. Undo a couple plugs and uh, the deck itself could be worked on completely free of the rest of the board. So there was just three or two plugs over here for the head, the race head and the record play head, and then the three cords for the motors. Now even if this does need a motor, this should be a pretty simple motor to, re to uh, replace. It's 2400 RPM, 12 volts counterclockwise. This is a pretty standard motor, but as you can see, this is not spinning freely. Why? Let's um, remove the bracket so we can see what's behind here. Now to do this I have to take the circuit board off first because there's another screw back there. We'll turn that little tab over and we'll remove this circuit board. And I should be able to get in here now and undo the screws here to lift the motor out. freely it's the motor itself the motor itself is gummed up now it's maybe possible to lubricate this motor and uh, put it back into service that would be the preferred well I mean changing the motor obviously would be the preferred thing but uh, I don't know that the guy that owns this wants to spend money on it but uh, he just uses it to archive tapes and he's got many other cassette decks so as they've been breaking he's been bringing them to me to to get going for him so let's just see if we can get this one going without uh, changing the motor so remove that bracket we'll unsolder the motor I'm going to actually try and open this motor up and see if I can lubricate the bearings there's a little circuit board in here with the uh, speed control on there and I think the problem on this is probably the bearings have just gotten so tight that the motor just stopped and it's it stopped in such a place that uh, right maybe maybe on one of the uh, one of the brush switching points and it just didn't have enough torque to get the motor going because as you can see it's stiff okay can get the deck out of the way now. Come apart just quite easy, just they pop off just like that. And here is the back end of the motor and the back bearing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some heat on the pulley to expand it so that I can pop the pulley off and then we can completely take the motor apart. The idea, there we go, behind putting heat on the pulley is it, uh, it expands the brass and allows the pulley to slip off quite easily and now I can take the motor apart and we can get to the actual bearing. I think I'll have to remove the wires that connect the motor to the little circuit board here. I want to actually strip the motor down so that I can get to the actual bearing inside the motor here. terminals this one here we'll just remove the wire for the ground that's one terminal
I know I'm just driving somebody insane right now. They're screaming, grab the solder pump, grab the solder wick. I just know it. Someone's screaming at their computer now. I'm torturing you guys, aren't I? Okay, there's the motor apart now. Now I can just take these little tabs out here and push the actual, or bend these little tabs over and push the actual motor right through. Ah! Try and do this without stabbing myself, of course. One thing you always need to do before you take apart a motor is mark which way it comes apart because if you put it on backwards it's going to run backwards so I'm just going to take a marking pen and I'll put a mark on here so that I know this is the way the orientation that it's going to go when I put the motor back together. I still got one tab to bend here. Okay here comes apart the motor. Push the whole rotor assembly and brush assembly through it okay well we'll have to put that back on but there's the, the motor out oh this bearing is nice and tight this is the bearing that's seized up on this thing right down here it's actually come right out of the of the housing that's how bad it is it's completely dry but I think we can, uh, I think we can fix that. And press that bearing back into the uh, the housing, and just maybe make it work. There, that's pressed back in. Let's uh, put some oil on it, lubricate it, make it spin, and then uh, try reassembling it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what kind of an idiot takes apart a little DC motor and fixes it? So just buy a new motor, right? That's the easy way to do things. We don't do things easy here. Especially when the guy that owns this thing never pays me for any work I do. He just gives me stuff that he doesn't want. So we'll clean off the Genji old oil from the motor shaft here where it seized. Same as down in here. Yummy. And we'll put some more oil in there and put some more on the back side here as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the rotor assembly. We got to put it into the into the brushes. Going to fit this in and then hold that in place while I drop the motor back into the, into the magnet housing. Armature here looks okay, if you can see here, it looks okay. Okay, that looks like that's in. Turning quite freely. Next, we'll orient the. I'm going to put my finger over here to stop this thing from flying in when the magnet starts to pull. And then I can just set it back in 
just like that. I'm gonna snap this back in. It's catching up a bit on the, on the middle case, so I'm just gonna pop it in like this, like that. It's spinning nice and freely. Let's uh, put a power supply on it. See how it spins. Give it a nice low voltage, say around, I don't know, two or three volts. Should spin quite nicely with just a few volts on it. Oh, yes, it's spinning. You can see that, I'm sure. And No problem. Okay, now we have to put the circuit board back on. I'll just try and bend these little tabs in just a little bit here. It's not going to come apart anyway. There's still a fair bit of friction on there. But... Okay, circuit board goes back on like this. And of course the ground wire, this is just to stop noise, just to ground the case, that's all that wire is for, it's just to ground the case. Put the rubber gasket over the front and drop the motor back into the remainder of the housing. And then I can snap the back back on it here. Just like that. And there's a little washer here that came off. Where did it go? There it is. Put that little washer back on here. That's to keep the oil in the bearing in the motor itself and then I'll likely have to heat this up again so let's get the electric torch we'll heat the brass up so what heating it up does is it uh, expands the brass ever so slightly and I can just tap it down like that. And now we have a nice free spinning motor ready to be reattached onto the bracket. Goes on kind of like that, I think. We'll put the two screws back in. Damn it, magnetic screwdriver, not working. Nice, nice, nice and smooth. Okay, mechanism back and we'll thread the belt around this. Probably wouldn't hurt to just to throw a drop of oil onto this uh, capstan as well. Notice I'm not going to pull the caption all the way out. It's not seized up or anything. I'm just pulling it out enough so that I can get a drop of oil onto it. And then slide it back in place. 
and I can push the retainer back in. I should probably tape this in place just to hold it. That would make it a little easier. But, what the heck. I'll just hold it like this and put the motor in and see if I can get it over the pulley. Like that. More than one way to skin a cat. Oh, I just got all the cat lovers pissed off. White's positive, right? Make sure that the uh, belt stays in place, which it does. Okay, let's uh, mount the deck, see if it works. I think for sure these slide in very easy compared to some of the uh, the decks out there, which are not fun to work with. One starts with Nak and ends with Amishi. That's the um, that's the pulley for the the um, tape counter, which does does not work. And it's not going to work. Of course, everybody's favorite deck that starts with Knack and ends with Dragon. Terrible ones to work on. But by comparison, I mean they're not they're not Techniques had some ugly ones to work on too. Some tape decks are really easy to work on, and this is one of them. Take one of these ones apart and put it together, you know, with your with one hand tied behind your back. Because everything just drops out. But some decks are a little more work. And some of them are just darn right ugly. Shall we check the speed and see how close it is? I think so. Nah, pretty close. 441. 
before it's you know it's I'm gonna say that's close enough for a worn out motor. Should we do a test recording and see how good it sounds? I think so. Okay, I think we'll record that same track that I've been recording all along. Do it in Dolby C, so we can get the best possible sound off this thing. Let's go into record, and cue the music. Now, when I play this back, I'm going to punch in the sound from the tape, so you will hear exactly what this recorded. So we'll be right back once the song is finished recording. And in case any of you guys are wanting to know, the song is called Aggressive. It's from musicbakery.com. It's royalty free. I keep, every time I use this track, people ask me what it is. So I'll just tell you right now up front. The song's, the track's called Aggressive. You can get it from musicbakery.com. Okay, time for a playback. Here we go. Notice you can hear the Dolby C working. You always can hear Dolby C, DBX, you can hear it working even more, but it actually sounds pretty good for a two-head deck. I, I gotta give it that. Yamaha made some really good sounding cassette decks. There you go, it's all back, or not back together yet. It's going back together now, but it's all fixed. That's how you can fix one of these motors that seized up. As long as the uh, contacts aren't burned up in it and it'll still turn, like sometimes the, the actual uh, armature fails and, and uh, the brushes go bad and if that's the case you're kind of foobarred but uh, if the motor's just seized up like that you can generally take it apart clean it and lubricate it and put it back together and it'll be good as new that's how you go about doing it yes the motor's available but you know what by the time one gets ordered in it'll probably be 30 40 50 60 dollars by the time you order the motor in because any of these places that you can order parts from like eBay they want ridiculous shipping fees to ship it to Canada, you know, and it's been, I ordered a transformer for an old radio, and by the time a, a simple transformer arrived, it was a hundred bucks. So, if we can fix them without having to put parts into it, that's all better. As you can hear, it's sounding perfect. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified of my new videos. Bye for now.